During the summer of 2018, we took venture on a meander around southeast Alaska, covering some 3,800 nautical miles over three and a half months. We went wherever our fancy led us, and a series of videos illustrate the highlights of what we saw along the way. This chart illustrates our wandering course. In episode one, we document our transit through British Columbia, from Sydney on Vancouver Island, to Prince Rupert, Canada's most northerly coastal city on the west coast. Venture's cockpit fills with gear, mostly photographic. Impressive ferries provide a vital link. Here in the coastal town of Nanaimo, a float plane heads for one of the offshore islands. Like Montague Harbour on Galliano Island. As indicated by the red arrows on the chart plotter, strong currents course through the narrow passes. For safe navigation, close attention must be paid to the tides, as this tug and tow are doing. Most likely this barge load of logs is from one of the many clear cuts like this one. There are several small seasonal marinas in the inlets bordering Johnson Strait. We stop for the night at Lagoon Cove. Burgees from visiting boats provide a colorful display. We contribute one from Venture to add to the collection. We head up Night Inlet to Glendale Cove, a well-known spot for bear watching. Using the tender at high tide, we are able to get close without disturbing their activity. Usually we think of bears as voracious carnivores, but in fact, most of their diet is vegetarian. Early in the season, before the availability of berries or salmon, bear graze on sedge grass, which is up to 25% protein. Along this coast, pilings are often all that remains of earlier settlements. They provide a convenient perch for a bald eagle. Further along the shore, bears flip over heavy rocks with ease, searching for crabs and other small prey.
Further up Knight Inlet, we head for Cascade Point to visit a waterfall we remember from a previous visit. The water is deep at the base of the falls and we are able to take venture into the very heart of the torrent. North of Vancouver Island, the inside passage is no longer inside for about 30 miles and it is exposed to the wide Pacific Ocean. Captain Vancouver's ship Discovery and accompanying vessel Chatham both went aground in this area in 1792. After safely passing Cape Caution, we moor for the night in an anchorage named Schooner Retreat. We take the small tender ashore and explore the forest and beach. We marvel at how fallen trees become nurseries for new growth. On the beach, they become bone-white natural sculptures. This lichen has the delightful name of Methuselah's beard. Canadian lighthouses, even those no longer manned, are always immaculate with their signature red roofs. We continue up the inside passage. Along the way, we pass a series of impressive waterfalls. Along with two other cruising boats, we enter Low Inlet at the head of which high volume but low rise falls discharge into Nettle Basin, fed by a large lake through Komoda River. For some reason, these falls always produced lots of foam.
we navigate narrow but scenic Granville Channel to the port of Prince Rupert, which has the deepest natural harbor in North America. It can handle post-Panamax container ships seen here. Being so far north, it is just 11 days sailing to Shanghai and six days by rail to Chicago. We pass the last Canadian lighthouse before crossing Dixon entrance into the waters of southeast Alaska. <laughs> 